All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be talking about how to set up and use the end screen function inside of YouTube. And I'm sure a lot of people out there are very familiar with how a lot of YouTubers used to, and some of them still do, uh, add an end index page to all of their videos. And essentially what both of these systems are trying to do is at the end of a video, around the last 20 to 21 seconds, or at least in the case of the end screen that YouTube has created, they are trying to add a little page where people can click on a couple of videos or maybe a button to subscribe and give people the option to continue to click through in videos and watch more stuff. Like that is the kind of the goal of both YouTubers themselves, including myself and YouTube, is to get people to watch more videos, see more ads, and make everybody more money. And the, the old way of doing it was you edited in a static image into your video and then added little clickable boxes inside of the video to then click through to another video. But YouTube has sort of simplified things now where you can add a page very much like this, where at the end of a given video, you'll have these little objects fade in and you can actually have little clickable boxes that take you to different videos or even hover over to allow you to subscribe to the channel itself. Basically giving YouTubers the ability to edit in these things themselves natively without having to know how to use Photoshop, a whole bunch of advanced video editing or anything, just load up your video practically unedited and you can just slap these at the end. And the way that you access this information, and we're basically going to be demoing this on my recently published video for my episode nine of Horizon that literally just, I just clicked the button to make public, uh, all you gotta do is go to your video page where you edit the information for your video and click on the end screen and annotations button. And pretty soon this will just be the end screen button because YouTube is in the process of getting rid of the old annotation system. So starting on May 2nd, um, any annotations that you have left on any videos will be uneditable and the ability to add new annotations will completely disappear from the back end of YouTube. So to start out with, I'm going to delete all of my buttons from my little workspace, and I'll basically just do a rundown of what all this stuff is. So this is the canvas where you'll add different objects and you can shuffle them around and move them and then double click on them to access their settings to do things like change what video you want to pop up or to change what channel you want to link people to. And then down here at the bottom is the timeline that shows you where all of your different objects will start showing up. Now by default and pretty much the only spot that you can put these objects is in the roughly the last 20 seconds of the video. So if you want to add say like a cool background image like you see in the background of my video, you'd want to go into something like Premiere Pro and in the last 21 seconds of the video, gently fade in a background image like I've got my own custom branded low poly wallpaper that I created for my channels. Then you'd have that gently fade in so that there's no busy stuff going on in the background that these little things would pop up on top of. So if you want to add something like that, I recommend adding those to around the last 21 seconds of the video, but you don't necessarily need to. So this is going to encompass the last 20 seconds of the video for the objects in your end screen. And all you got to do to add things to this page is simply click on add element and you can add one of four objects to your little working canvas. You can add a video which will allow you to just uh, either select your most recent upload, let YouTube decide based upon the viewer's most recent viewing habits, they'll suggest a video for them to watch, or you can manually select one of your recent videos or all of your videos that they can watch instead. So I'll probably select my most recent video, the Deliver Us the Moon developer interview that I uploaded earlier today. And then I can click and drag this around anywhere on this grid. 
And one of the things I like about this is it actually provides you with a grid that you can see on the screen in order to arrange things so that they all line up. And the other thing that I'll probably want is I want people to subscribe to my videos after they're done watching, because that's kind of half of the, the challenge here on YouTube is getting people not just to watch your videos, but also to stick around and start building out a more dedicated audience for your content. So I'm actually going to kind of get rid of some of this empty space between my icon in the middle that's the subscribe button and the edge of this other box by simply clicking on this video object and then dragging around these little circles that make up the new corners of the square. Now do note that not every object in here can be resized, like I can't resize the subscribe button. So sometimes you might want to just move this down to like a corner and have these other bigger boxes up here on the side. Depending on whatever style you want to use, this can more or less support it. But I kind of like having things centered for the most part, just so that everything's simple and straightforward, like a nice little line. And I'll put this video over here because I want the button to go to the next episode of my Horizon Zero Dawn series to appear on the right side, like it's a skip button to go to the next scene on like a DVD or something. And then the last thing I wanna do is I'm gonna add another video where I have YouTube suggest a video until I make the Horizon Zero Dawn episode 10 available for viewing later this week. Or maybe this weekend, I haven't quite decided yet. And then once you've got all your objects in your canvas, you can click on the preview button to preview what this looks like to see if you like how everything is arranged. And I think this is pretty good. This is how I like my videos. Uh, some people might prefer to have it so that they have extra text on this background image. If you want to do extra text, you'll have to edit that in yourself in the background image off screen in like Photoshop or Illustrator, but that's actually pretty easy. Now, the other thing that you can do is I, if I disable preview and drag our little cursor back to the start of the index to make sure that all of my objects appear at the start of the end screen and not somewhere in the middle, because we want that full 20 seconds because 20 seconds is kind of the, the, the happy medium for time. Like 30 seconds is kind of too long. People kind of get bored staring at your buttons and maybe leave to another video but 10 seconds isn't really long enough for people to read the different videos you're suggesting and then to make a decision and click on one of them to watch next. So 20 seconds is kind of that happy medium that sits between those two numbers. So you want to have pretty much exactly that 20 seconds. So make sure you've got this blue indicator at the start of your end screen before you edit anything after you've done a preview. Now, the other thing that you can do with this is you can also import buttons from another video so that you can almost create your own template that you can then import to all of your future videos. Like I can import the videos from the Deliver Us the Moon video, and I can just say, replace the current ones. Or I can import the videos via a template, which YouTube has created based upon the most popular orientations and layouts that other YouTubers have been using on the platform and also during the end screen beta system that they were testing out with some of the bigger YouTube channels. So you could use like this one, that kitty corner is a video up in the upper corner. You've got a lot of options and you can kind of mix and match these as you so choose. And should you want to change these at any time, you can just double click on these icons and either edit them or delete them with this little trash can icon, or you can even click the pencil icon in this little list of all your objects in the sidebar here. And then once you've got the exact layout that you want, like the one that I was using, and I'm gonna set this to do best reviewer. Once you've got everything that you want, you can click on the save button. Now it is worth noting that in order to hit the save button, you need to have at least one video object that people can click on. You can't just have a, like a link to subscribe to the channel, a link to someone else's channel, and then like a link to a website, you have to have at least one of those be another video. Because again, the goal of this system is to get people to continue to watch videos and make both you and YouTube money. Especially YouTube, because YouTube is the one who's developing these tools for you to use. 
So that's more or less how this system works. Once it's you hit save and this video goes public, people will be able to see and click on this and you're good to go. And it's relatively easy to use. Uh, I wish it was a little bit more dynamic so that you could use it in other portions of your video, not just the ending, but that might be something that they add to a later rendition of the system to replace things like the video annotations. So if you have any questions or comments or anything else you'd like to voice about this tutorial, go ahead and throw those in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to help people out if they're getting kind of stuck on something or if they're having an error. And otherwise, that's it for this one, ladies and gentlemen. I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. And you can even see my annotation version of uh, my end screen here as well. Yay! All right, bye, everybody.